Hello, and welcome back to my Shell tutorial series. Last time was our introduction, so this time I'm going to primarily be introducing you to some more commands. So basically, whenever you do stuff on a high-level operating system like Mac or Windows, but again, this series isn't really for Windows, it really just implements some shell scripts. So basically, everything you can do with, you know, um, clicking and po pointing and clicking with your mouse, you can do with shell. So, for example, you know, you can uh, copy files places and you can move files places. More specifically, I thought, you know, normally with the recording software that I use, and I use Debut since, it, you know, it's pretty good, but um, for uh, just some weird stuff happens. So right now, it's saving the movies that I record into my uh, movies directory. So right now, as you can see, I'm back in my home directory, and I can CD into movies. And if I list everything, you can see there's untitled10.mob. Now that just happens to be the file for, well, that just happens to be the file for the first episode, which I haven't even, you know, uploaded yet. So, some wiki uh, time distortion going on there. But, yes, this is the thing that I just finished recording. And I need to move that into another directory. And also, this is the movie that's currently being recorded right now. So that's a temporary file that is currently being written to by my recording software. But right now, I want to show you how I can move this file into somewhere else. Specifically, I want to move it into uh, Documents, AA Folders, Programming, Shell. Now if I list, there's, uh, there's another folder in here. In fact, I want to move it inside of that folder. And inside of that folder, there's another folder with nothing in it, unless, you know, you count dot and dot dot. But we talked about that last episode. So how can I move files? Well, there's a command called MV, which stands for move. And again, if you want to know more about move, you can do man MV. But if you're on a Unix system, you can do that on your own time, because I don't want to bore you about going through manuals. But if I just type MV without any arguments, which some commands if you don't have arguments, won't do anything, but it'll display help. S but you want to be careful because some commands don't need arguments. So if you try to run them without any arguments and expect help, then you could actually be doing something pretty bad, which is why you have to be careful sometimes with shell because since it is, you know, interacting directly with your operating system, you can do some bad stuff. But let's try to move this file over. So first is my source, which is going to be the uh, untitled... 10.mov. So right now, when we CD'd, I mainly did stuff like a uh, desktop and stuff without a slash in front of it. Because if you put a slash in front of it, that means you're going to, it's an absolute path name, which means you're going directly from root instead of where you are currently. So if we do our source as users, users uh, scuff sony movies untitled 10.mov and that's our source our target since we're already in the um, we're already in the directory we want we'll just give it a new file name and we'll call it episode 1 episode 01.mov now that that was quick <laughs> So now we'll list the files, and now there's an episode 01.mov. If we do ls long format, we can see this file is, uh, this is the size of the file, but it's in bytes, so it's almost 50 megabytes, or almost 50 million bytes. Which, you know, 50 megabytes isn't a bad size, especially since I'm recording in, I think, 1080p. I don't know, you tell me. It depends on what you're watching it in, but... If you're not watching it in HD, then I sorry because it's probably hard to read what I'm typing. But I digress. Now there's another way. There's you know there's another command specifically. There's copy, which is CP. And I'm pretty sure for these you can also type out copy. No, you can't. So it's CP, and this is how you copy files. But let's say again you don't have a GUI, and let's say you don't you quickly want to make a file. So we're going to. Uh, we're gonna jump out of this directory, so now we're in tutorials. And if I print my, um, sorry, if I print my working directory, we're in user scuffs on documents, AAA folders, programming, shell, tutorials. 
So, some commands, when you pass them a file name and it doesn't exist, they make them for you. For example, when I did this um, move, I gave it a non-existent file in the form of episode 01. It created that file. But if you just, but not all commands do that. In order to quickly create a file, you can use the command touch and just give it a file. And we're going to call this file test.txt. Now, if we list everything in here, there's test.txt and videos. If we list it in the long format, we can see that test zero bytes, which means it's an empty file because we haven't put anything into it. Now, let's put something into it. So we can, there's another command called echo. Echo, it's the same for Windows, in fact, but echo just, it's basically Shell's version of print or print line. So we can echo hello world. And on the next line, that's not what I wanted it to do. That's not what, oh, wait, I don't want it to go into there. Sorry, that was uh, some stuff. If I echo hello world, it'll just print out hello world, except I want it to have an exclamation point. Should not have a problem with that. Dang it. Okay, let's let's go with no exclamation point then. <laughs> hello world, echo hello world. So what that does, whenever you feed a command and it returns something or prints something, it feeds into what's called the pipe. The pipe is a very big concept and a very big mechanism for shell. So if we do echo hello world we can feed it into a pipe via a vertical bar. This means just pass it through the pipeline. And vertical bar is just on my keyboard, it says shift backslash. So instead of a backslash, which is the silly thing that Windows system uses, shift backslash and you have a pipe character. And that's how you feed things through the pipeline. But there are two other things. There is a less than symbol and a greater than symbol. And that's more like feeding something into a file. So if we do this, we can feed it into test.txt. Quick and easy. Now if we, for example, list the files in a long format, we can see that test.txt is now 13 bytes. And if we count the characters in Hello World, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then there's a feed line character that Echo automatically puts in. So that's 13 characters, because you see each character is a byte. And since this is showing you in bytes, it's that easy. Now, what if we didn't want to count the characters? Well, first, if we wanted to see what is in test.txt, there's another command. I know, I'm just basically spewing commands at you and lightly skipping over the very important concept of pipelines, but bear with me. Cat stands for concatenate, and that's how you can basically read from files, and it'll print and it'll feed them into the, um, into the command line. So if we concatenate, that's everything inside of that file. So let's say we just counted this, which is a lot of work, you know, having to count things, especially if you have something extremely long. So there just happens to be another command. There's word count, which is WC, and we can just say hello world. Uh, except word count likes dealing with files. So what? So what we can do with the word count is that we can cat test.txt, but again, through the pipe into word count. So this is um, so what word count basically does is that it gives you three numbers. It gives you the number of lines, the number of words, and the number of characters. So as we can see, there's 13 characters. Again, if you just do WC, oh, now it's waiting, and I'll cut it. Also, if you ever accidentally get trapped in something, or you just want to get out of a program, you can do Control C, and that'll stop the program. I'm pressing Control C, and that's just entering a new line. There's also Control T, which, if Control C is not working for you, Control T will terminate the program, which will definitely get it out for you. If it doesn't, then I feel sorry for you. Good luck. So, continue along that line. We can check man, WC word line character and byte count. So if we go down to options, there are four number of bytes in each input, right? Uh, we don't need the number of bytes. The number of lines, number of characters, and number of words. So a word count can also count the number of bytes in the input file. 
So L will give us the number of lines, M characters, and I believe that's a W? W for words, yes. So that gave us three numbers, but let's say we wanted just one. So if we wanted to count characters, pretty sure it was M. Yes. So that returns 13. So there's 13 characters. So basically, so we can pass, we can continue to pass things through here. So imagine if we took the output of that and written and write it to test.txt. Now what's in test.txt? 13. Well, tab 13. So if we imagine if we did that and fed it into word count again, we got M. There's nine characters. So there must be a lot of spaces. So yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Because there's the, um, there's a line feed at the end. Or end a file. Same thing. Not really. You get the point. I digress. Let's clear this. So along with the pipe so the pipeline, if you haven't caught on already, is an extremely powerful thing because you can just keep feeding things through it and feeding things through it, passing them through several different commands. So let's um again, let's do um echo hello world. This is a new line. Backslash n is an escape character, which means well backslash is used to escape the next character. So if we do backslash n, that means n is not going to be printed, but it's used as an escape character. Backslash n just happens to be a new line character. So that means if we just do that and feed this into test.txt, and we can concatenate test.txt, that's not what it should do. <laughs> we just echo Boom, boom, boom. Oh, well, that's uh, that should work. <laughs> Whatever. What? Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. It should definitely though. What if I fed this into word count? One line. Okay. Besides that. So. This should be into test dot text. Except let's get rid of this. So now if we just cat test.txt, we can say it just contains hello, comma, space, world. Which, again, should be 13 characters. One line, two words, 13 characters. Because word count is useful like that. Now, unfortunately, I am not going to write a very long file from scratch, but I will try to show you some useful commands that you can do with very long files. For example, there are two very useful commands. There's grep. Grep uh, something regular expression. Let's see, man grep. Grep utility is it searches a file. Well, I knew this. I just forget what grep stands for. But grep is used for searching files. There's several different options for grep. But normally it goes something like grep, give it something to search for, like hell, and a file. And what grep returns, if you don't give it any option, is the line in that file that contains the... Well, it returns every single line in the file that contains this regular expression, which is just a string that it's looking for. Let's make a new file real quick, just as well, and we'll call it uh, test.csv. And CSV is a comma... It stands for comma-separated values, and... Um, it's just comma separated values. It's base. You can open it in Excel, but it's basically just fields separated by commas. So imagine if we wanted to edit a file and we didn't want to have to feed stuff into it via the pipe. Well, there's just happens. Um, terminal Unix shell has some built-in um, text editors. One of those being Nano. Oh, Nano is like the best. Oh, see, since there's more than one test, we have to pre specify. So, nano test.csv. Welcome to a text editor. Super high tech. So, in here, we're just going to enter some comma separated values. Hello, world. Okay, enter. <laughs> this is a new line. We don't need to, there could be spaces. This is a new line.
In order to get out of this, on the bottom you can see several commands, so I'll do Control X, and I want to press Y, so it will save everything I just did, and press Enter. So now if we cat test.csv, we'll say this is what's this is what it is currently in. So now let's use some grep. So you can use grep the way I showed you before, or you can just um, pass the uh, file through a pipe. So if we grep world, it'll display every line that contained world, which happens to be the first line and the second line, but not, I mean the first line and the third line, not the second line, since it didn't contain world. And we can also do grep the old-fashioned way, regular expression, let's search for e in test.csv. Every line contains an e. There's an e in hello, there's an e in new and line, and there's an e in goodbye. Maybe let's try searching for an a. There's only an a in the second line because there's a separated a. So this is how you can quickly search through files. And again, if you do man grep, there it'll show you all the different options you can do. For example, we can do grep a test.csv, but we want to add an option of C. C counts. It counts the number of lines. See how uncertain I <laughs> I said that? C only count a selected only count the count of lines it found it in. So if we go back to this where we're looking for world, we can do hyphen C and it'll say there were two lines that contain the expression world. And then there's another useful command, which is why I did the CSV format in the first place, and it's called cut. And this is how you can, um, well, it's not how you can cut things, but it's how you can um, search files that are separated by a regular expression. So, for example, we'll cat in test.csv into cut. And cut, you need a few options, and it can change. But there's hyphen D, where you give it a delimiter. So in this list of items or values, you give it the uh, regular expression, or it might just have to be a character that separates them. For example, in this CSV file, or any CSV file, they're separated by commas. And then you give it the field number. For example, 2. So that means it should output the second value of every line. World is world. I, I, that makes sense. So that means on the first line, the first value is world. On the second line, the second value is is, and on the third line, the second value is world. So it did world is world, which makes sense. If we try to print character 3, it'll print the third character on the first line, the third character on the second line, and since the uh, fourth line doesn't have a third field, it didn't print anything, except for a new line, since, you know, that is something. So, imagine if we could do, like, a lot of this at once. So let's cat test.csv, pipe it into grep, and we'll be looking for world, and then pipe that again into this, we'll, we'll, where we'll find delimiting with commas, we'll get field 2. So world and world, since that just happens to be the second value in those two lines. So you can use a pipe, you can use the pipe, basically as much as you want and you can keep passing it in. I can just pass this into word count again and then what if I wanted word count just to output the number of lines um, I could pipe that character which is like space 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 2. Uh, what could I pipe that into? Eh, I might be able to pipe it into cut if we use a delimiter of space and search for, I don't know, like the seventh field. Nope. Wait. Oh, sorry. F7. And believe it or not, that just printed out a space. Well, actually, actually, we could just count the characters here. Word count. Uh, we just want to count the number of characters. Was that W or was it M? The number of characters, nine. So that means we're going to do this except eight. Oh, wow. See? That extremely long pipe. So first we fed test.csv into the and piped it into grep. 
so that means grep then prints out every line that contains the word world. Cut, based on you know the delimiting comma, prints out the second value in each of the line each of the lines that grep just fed it. So at this point we have world world. So then based on those two lines we then count the number of lines and that returns a string which is like seven spaces and then the number of lines which I don't know or like but uh, I think there's a way around that but we'll get to that later and then based on that we're cutting with a delimiter based on space and since there's a lot of spaces this would return a lot of empty fields unless we knew exactly what field this number was in which happens to be field 8 so 2 the number of lines that were returned by grep uh, was returned by the file. So basically, pipes are again very powerful. So next episode, yeah. So yeah, that's good for this episode. Next episode, we can get into again more commands. So I understand this episode was a lot of commands. Like we did, we can move files, we can copy files, which is basically the same as moving with the source file then the copy file. But instead of moving it, it copies it obviously as by name. And then we did, we learned cat, word count, grep, uh, cut, and I don't know, something else probably. I don't remember. Touch. And again, the, the text editor nano, which is like my favorite. There are other ones, but nano is the best. And then again, if you ever need to know more about these, you can just do man, for example, nano, nano. And nano's another editor and enhance file pico clone and to exit man just press q again and since i like clean terminals clear so actually next episode we'll get into more commands but then yeah we'll probably just get into more commands we'll worry about shell files later so again this has been Baraliborn. see you next episode have fun working with bash